Hey everyone, my name is Rob. I'm the Urban Forestry Consultant with Seattle Tree Care. We're here at one of uh, Michael's uh, clients' homes. Uh, they have this American elm in the front yard. It's called Omis Americana. However, when looking at it, we suspect that it's infected with Dutch elm disease. So what we're going to do is, is uh, take tissue samples from the canopy to see if it does. Dutch elm disease is an aggressive fungal pathogen. It tends to block the vascular system of the tree, ultimately killing it within you know, two to three growing seasons. One extreme example of a tree that failed, at least in part from Dutch elm disease, can be found in our tree emergency video in which an American elm in the public right-of-way failed at the roots and onto the adjacent house. So I'm just gonna set a line, I guess just up in that big crotch right over there. Yeah, I think I see the one. Good shot. Thank you. Still got it. Still got it. You got that on film, right, John? No one's gonna believe me. <laughs> <laughs> you ever climb, John? Have I? Yeah. I have not. I used to climb three <laughs> Never been up in the bucket or anything? Oh, right on. Yeah. Those things are sketchy. <laughs> well, it's one thing, like, you get yourself all the way up there, and then you're like, okay, ready to come down, and you just start touching the controls, and you start shaking. Yeah, I was not correct. No, you never, you never get used to that. So, as you heard Rob mention before, you know, we're out here collecting samples on this uh, uh, American elm tree. Um, you know, and the big part of today is, is getting the samples to find out if in fact the tree does have Dutch elm disease uh, just because it can be very simple and very easy sometimes to see a declining tree a declining elm and just uh, quickly assume and sometimes most times it is a safe assumption that you know uh, the tree may be infected with the, the pathogen but in this case with it being such a remarkable tree out in the front yard it adds great character you know we we want to be certain it has Dutch elm disease before we go and remove this tree uh, just because if it doesn't have Dutch elm disease uh, that may open up possibilities for further preservation of this tree through you know risk reduction pruning uh, and possible retrenchment pruning of the tree uh, as time goes on into the future so it's going to be an exciting day out here all right I'm also going to start heading up there Beautiful day for climbing. Love this job. See the top of the Columbia Center. That uh, municipal building that's just between us and the Columbia Center is where the uh, permit application is actually being processed. It's uh, the Seattle Department of Construction Inspections, the SDCI, who requested that we get a positive test. So I'm gonna go ahead here and make a proper pruning cut parallel to the branch collar. Well, oh well, under four inches, so no public notice is required. We've got this section right here. Look up, see it's dead. 
Then out here, we've still got some sucker growth, but we can see that tip is kind of dead. See the dead bark there, still got some live tips on it. So I took a proper pruning cut right there. That's uh, parallel to the branch collar. Got it right here. And my plan is, instead of processing it, putting it in this bag here, I'm gonna send it down for processing. So it's called Headache. But out here, it's another good example. We see some dieback right there, dieback here, kind of the pocket. The tips are still alive. Now, some of those crazy climbers would try and go out there and get that. I'm already a good, oh, 25 feet from the main stem. And uh, I'm no monkey. Whee, whoo, whee. Yeah, this cool. tree's looking a little toasty. Yeah, what I'm noticing is uh, like dieback in spots and then just immediate kind of sprouting. Yeah. Doesn't really seem like um, normal dieback. And additionally too, you see all like the necrosis right down by the union? How, have you how noticed you mean, that? Like, just the dead? Dead necrosis? Yeah, there's about like three to four inches where it just gets very black and mottled. Oh. And then, yeah, you see the sprouting directly underneath that, that black. Oh, wow, look at that. I've noticed that on a bunch Whoa. of the samples from over here. And that's on dead. Are you are you collecting dead wood? Live. Okay, okay. Yeah, but, but you're seeing is, it on live. Yeah, that's a dead example. Yeah. Wow. But pretty wild. I've seen it and I got a live one that has this starting. So I was like, yes. <laughs> I was oh, like, this there you is go. a nice. perfect sample right here. Yeah. Well so I've already got all my samples. I'm just climbing for the <laughs> now. Yeah, dude. So. Yeah, hey, this is YouTube. All right, don't want to get us demonetized with that language. <laughs> yeah, what do you know about the uh, bark beetle, Michael? The bark beetle? Yeah, that uh, like elm, elm beetle, what do you call it? Like elm bark beetle? Well, I know it's a pesky little bugger, especially because it's one of the main vectors for passing Dutch elm from tree to tree. Exactly, the only other vector I understand is uh, just roots. Is. Roots and there's always the possibility of pruning tools as well. Yeah, that's just always like the case. humans. Yeah, you can spread disease from tree to tree. So what we'll want to do is we're going to want to uh, spray these down. Yes. Yep. And I have a, a bleach solution back at the office. Nice. Or you can simply use Lysol to spray and sanitize as well. But very important to sanitize your tools between cuts, especially if you know you're working on a, a diseased tree. Have you been finding any fungi? No, 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 no fruiting bodies or anything. We got a whole colony of fruiting bodies on this limb over oh, here. Oh, no way. This has been dead for a very long time. Ah. And I don't even think it was healthy back then. None of these cuts have uh, healed. And this one, for example, is very old. What we're seeing out here on the ends is, uh, you know, this very large decayed limb. This has been dead for a long time, just given the amount of decay that's on it, the bark sloughing off, and uh, you know, these tall tale signs of these these fungal pathogen or these uh, fruiting bodies that are coming off the limb. You know, these just don't pop up overnight, especially this large. And even if you look out towards the end, here and here and underneath, there are also some very large fruiting bodies. So this fruiting body is not an indicator of Dutch elm disease, uh, but it is an indicator of decay and uh, senescence in the tree and in the limb. So, you know, as trees, uh, as wood decays, other organisms take advantage of that. And in this situation, these uh, fruiting bodies are taking advantage of this branch about I don't know, 30, 40 feet off the ground and looked like at one point they were surviving and they're, they're declining themselves as well but the moss has taken over. Woo! Look at him go. You wouldn't think he's a desk jockey. <laughs> Live for those swings. <laughs> right, dude? Same. All right, I think I'm gonna take another big swing here. Do it. Just because. Let's see it for the fun. Let's see, where am I gonna land? 
Got to get all the way out to that union. You got it. All right, here we go. Now that the samples were collected, we sent them to Wazoo for testing. Jenny, the diagnostician at the WSU Plant and Insect Diagnostic Laboratory, begins by meticulously preparing the samples. Each step is crucial to avoid contamination and ensure reliable results. Specific regents are added to some of the samples that will react with spores while others are examined under a microscope to identify any signs of fungal presence. After a period of incubation, the samples are analyzed and a detailed breakdown of the composition helps to detect any trace of Dutch elm disease. After a couple of weeks, we got an email from Jenny stating that the results were negative. Now we have to go back and investigate further. What could possibly be killing this majestic urban giant? And what can we do to save it? Here at Seattle Tree Care, our primary goal is to ensure the health and longevity of these and other iconic trees. Removal is always our last option. While today's results are promising, our work doesn't stop here. We'll need to conduct further tests and continuous monitoring is essential if we want to protect our Seattle canopy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.